The Lord be with you. I'm Pastor Matt Smith from Bethlehem Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lansing, Michigan, and this is worship for the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, September 19th, 2021. Today's service will include hymns and songs led by members of our choir, an anthem sung by Jeannie Smith, Pastor John's sermon titled, Thinking Like Jesus, as well as the children's sermon, and readings and prayers from our assisting minister today, Bob Meeker. If you would like to contribute to the ongoing relief efforts in Haiti, the Gulf Coast, and Northeast of the United States, you can go to elca.org forward slash disaster to contribute directly through the ELCA, and 100% of your donations will go to help on the ground in the relief and recovery efforts. Today we hear James warn against selfish ambition while the disciples quarrel over which one of them is the greatest. Jesus tells them that the way to be great is to serve. Then to make it concrete, he puts in front of them a little child. We are called, we are called to welcome all of God's children, all the children that God puts in front of us, to make room for them in daily interaction and to give them a place of honor in the assembly. Now please join us, if you will, for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Submit yourselves to God. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. O God, the giver of every good and perfect gift, We confess that we are imperfect. Our minds are filled with hate and prejudice. Our tongues are uncontrolled. Our deeds do not bear witness to our faith. As sinners, we stand condemned. We plead the merits of your perfect Son, Jesus Christ, who willed and spoke and did what you commanded. For our sake he obeyed. For our sake, we beg forgiveness. The will of God is your redemption. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was betrayed into human hands and killed, and on the third day rose again. In his name and for his sake, I declare to you the full forgiveness of all your sins. Thanks be to God. Amen. And we sing, We Praise You, O God.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. How tempting it is, O God. It is tempting to argue who among us is the greatest, yet your way is a different way, O God. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Grant us the grace to resist temptation, O God. Teach us to be servants of all. Then we will welcome children in your son's name. Then we will welcome you even as we will one day be welcomed into heaven's glory. This we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And now we invite children worshiping with us to come and focus on their screens for the Worship Talk for Children. Good morning. Hope that you can uh, 
pay special attention to um, our, our worship talk for you especially. And um, I think Jesus loves this part of the service. Uh, as we're going to read in a little bit from the Gospel of Mark, Jesus really loves children. Um, he hugged uh, a child when uh, lots of people in his day and age just, uh, psh, yeah, keep the kids away, they're a bother. But uh, not Jesus. He notices them, he attends to them, he listens to them, and he hugs them. But our gospel reading tells us there's something else that Jesus loves. And um, I, can, I can maybe get at that best by um, t- talking about some sports. In um, baseball, in hockey, in basketball, in soccer. Well, not in football, but in those four sports, um, they keep track of a special statistic. Um, in baseball, they keep track of how many games a pitcher wins and how many home runs a hitter hits but they also keep track of how many times a fielder assists in making a put out, like the shortstop throws it to the first baseman. Um, In hockey, they keep special, special attention to the number of times that a hockey player causes somebody else or helps somebody else make a goal. And in soccer, my favorite sport, they also keep track of how many times that other player makes the perfect pass that allows somebody to score a goal. Now, the world, most people, celebrate the goal scorer. Uh, there's, there's a guy who plays for the United States team. Every time he scores, he does a backflip. Um, just stands there and flips himself over. And uh, sometimes the assist maker is, um, the helper, is not so noticed. But not Jesus. I'm sure if Jesus was keeping score, he'd always get the right person who made the assist because that's what he'd notice. Because he tells us in the gospel that he didn't come for people to help him. He came to help people. And later on, about a week later, he'll tell the disciples that he, Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life to free us all from our sin and from our selfishness. So every time you help at home, every time you're helpful on the playground, every time you make that pass in soccer or basketball that allows someone else to score, you can picture Jesus smiling and saying, yeah, helping, serving, uh, being good to others, being kind, pitching in. Those are things I really notice And those are things I really love. Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our helper, for giving everything you had to free us from sin and to make our lives new. Help us to want to help. Help us to find ways to serve one another and change our hearts so that we find joy in being one of your helpers. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. The reading today is from James, the third and fourth chapters. The wisdom of God unites our hearts and minds. Instead of living to satisfy our own wants and desires, we manifest this wisdom in peace, gentleness, mercy, and impartiality toward others. A reading from James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. 
and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. You covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. From there, Jesus and his followers went through Galilee, but he didn't want anyone to know it. This was because Jesus was teaching his disciples, the Son of Man will be delivered into human hands. They will kill him. Three days after he is killed, he will rise up. But they didn't understand this kind of talk and they were afraid to ask him. They entered Capernaum. When they had come into a house, he asked, What were you arguing about during the journey? They didn't respond, since on the way they had been debating with each other about who was the greatest. Well, Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be least of all and the servant of all. Jesus reached for a little child, placed him among the twelve, and embraced him. And then he said, Whoever welcomes one of these children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me isn't actually welcoming me, but rather the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The sermon, rather ambitiously, has uh, four goals. Uh, the first is to consider how, how pervasive, all around us, uh, among us in this congregation, and yes, deep within us, is what James describes in today's lesson not the wisdom that comes down from above. Instead, it is from the earth, quite natural and demonic. Offer an opportunity for you to see how others, like the apostles in today's gospel, uh, Bishop Craig and his newsletter and I, might be infected with this uh, worldly, demonic way of thinking and challenging you to Look closely at your own values, your own perspective, your, your own reaction to, to life. Contrast the world's way of thinking with the mind of Christ is our second goal, and to consider uh, more deeply Jesus' way of humble service. And then third, to celebrate that Jesus, by going the way of the cross, frees us from being enslaved to this world's way of thinking claiming for ourselves the truth that with Jesus, we as individuals and as Christ's body also rise up to new life, to servant life. And finally, uh, just briefly, to apply the Jesus way of servanthood 
um, to our relationship with children as Jesus gives us that example of attending um, to the least among us. So, first goal. How pervasive is this human, even demonic way of thinking? Well, this recalled for me an incident when I was a first-year seminarian. We had something called a tea group, which was a a chance to to get together, to kind of network, to build relationships, and it was under the facilitation of a very wise fourth-year student. And um, I was called for some rather immature behavior. Um, what, What was pointed out to me is that I had a really good friend, Dick Koenigke, that was part of this group, and I was constantly um, trying to one-up him, uh, tease him, uh, disagree with him, and uh, what Bill Walbrick, the facilitator, pointed out, he said, uh, John, um, you are measuring yourself, sort of like to see um, how tall a tree you can be in this group. And because I'm the facilitator, you won't take me on. You know I'm the tallest tree. But, but Dick, in your view, is the second tallest tree. And you're trying to chop him down to size so that you can be um, the, the second tallest tree uh, after me. And um, that struck me. And what I want to share with you is how completely unconscious that was. Until Bill pointed it out, I had no idea that I was... Uh, in that kind of intense competition with one of my very good friends. Um, Just like the apostles, uh, later on after uh, the incident in this lesson, maybe a week later, James and John are asking Jesus, uh, when you come into your kingdom, can we be the second and third tallest trees? Can we sit on your right and on your left? And then uh, Bishop Craig Satterley, uh, in a recent Senate newsletter, he wrote this, Quoting President Biden, we do not forgive, we do not forget, we will hunt you down, we will make you pay. And the bishop writes, I had three reactions. I listened to President Biden respond to the killing of 13 of our soldiers in Afghanistan. First, this is how I expect, even desire, an American president to respond to a terrorist attack on our forces. Second, I am dismayed that President Biden's words accurately reflect the way we are responding to each other in many areas of our life, even the church. Third, I am so thankful this is not how God responds to our attacks on God, one another, creation, and ourselves. So again, from James, this is not the wisdom that comes down from above, Instead, it is from the earth, natural and demonic. That's, that's a hard sell. Um, to think that we're mistaken, to think that our thoughts are awry, to know that our desires are sinful is one thing, but to feel that we're infected, uh, like a pandemic, with the demonic? Well, listen to Jesus rebuking Peter for his uh, very natural human uh, desire for Jesus to avoid the cross. Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And then Colossians 2.8, See to it that nobody enslaves you with philosophy and foolish deception, which conform to human traditions and the way the world thinks and acts, rather than Christ. Jesus, a week after, as I mentioned, calls over the disciples and says, you know that the ones who are considered the rulers by the Gentiles show off their authority over them and their high-ranking officials order them about? But that's not the way it is with you. Whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you will be slave of all. For the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but rather to serve and to give his life to liberate many people. Well, one caution, certainly this ideal of being a servant leader can be abused if it is um, 
somebody in power trying to foist it off on somebody who um, is vulnerable, someone who's marginalized, someone who is damaged with poor self-esteem, um, try to um, impose on somebody a martyr complex. Take the abuse, uh, take the humiliation, uh, you're not worth anything, you can only do this. Uh, that's not what Jesus is intending. He's talking to, to his chief followers, the leaders, that they are to take on the, the mind of a, of a slave or a servant. Um, and the second comment is that our, my struggle with um, the world's way of thinking and being more Christ-like, that struggle can be... A, a disappointment to God and to myself, but can't it also be seen as a sign of life, as a sign of the Spirit continuing to nudge uh, you and I? Um, it, a struggle is not a bad thing. Paul writes to the Philippians, carry out your own salvation with fear and trembling, but then adds, God is the one who enables you both to want and to actually live out his good purposes. So it, it'd be good for us to feel a little bit needy, um, to feel that um, Satan is smarter, um, his ways more cunning, his traps invisible to our naked human eyes, uh, to turn to God, uh, to turn to each other, to help with this task of putting on a, um, a wholesome, wholehearted servant mentality. Um, it's, a, it's a real blessing to me that Chris drags me into servant opportunities that I would have avoided, and um, my experience is I survive them and even flourish. Um, BELC uh, gets me into things like Lansing Save, where my generosity becomes more joyful than it uh, might be in other ways. Uh, I get a chance to be in Faith Family Food Day and um, enjoyed a, a delicious lunch and fellowship with many of you. Um, a mission trip to Stony Lake uh, remains a, a treasured memory in my life. And I'm beginning even to sense, uh, as I substitute in the Alder Guild, the privilege, the awesome privilege of setting God's table. The Bible offers us many descriptions of what Christ-like serving looks like. Uh, first, from our James passage, wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and everything that is evil. But what are the wisdom from above? First, it is pure and peaceful, gentle, obedient, filled with mercy and good actions, fair and genuine. Those who make peace sow the seeds of justice by their peaceful acts. And then one of my favorite passages in Philippians 2, therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in love, and any sharing in the Spirit, any sympathy, complete my joy, writes Paul, by thinking the same way, having the same love, being united and agreeing with each other, don't do anything from selfish purposes, but with humility, think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Adopt this attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not consider being equal with God something to exploit. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like human beings. When Jesus found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Indeed, the more our minds, our hearts, our lives take shelter under the arms of the cross of Jesus the more we will be freed up from jealousy or scorekeeping or close-mindedness and all the other ways that uh, our, our thoughts and our actions reflect that old humanity, the more we will be shaped by God's love for sinners. As Paul writes in Colossians, Therefore, as God's chosen, holy and loved, put on compassion, 
kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Be tolerant with each other. And if someone has a complaint against anyone, forgive each other. As the Lord forgave you, so also forgive each other. And over all these things put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. The peace of Christ must control your hearts, a peace into which you were called in one body, and be thankful, people. The word of Christ must live in you richly. So Paul here and elsewhere uses baptismal imagery. Put off, put on. Uh, early baptismal liturgies, uh, people would disrobe to show that their old life was being cast off, and after coming out of the water, um, they would be clothed in a new white robe. Uh, and, and it was humility and kindness and tenderness and gentleness and love and forgiveness that that new robe represented it. Um, and it's not a one-off. Repentance, change of heart and mind, and life is ongoing. Uh, Paul writes to the Romans, Stop being conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing, the renewing, the renewing of your minds so that you can figure out what is God's will and what is good and pleasing and mature. So finally, what might this look like in a specific aspect of our lives and ministry? Well, our, our treatment of children um, we have that example from our gospel reading that uh, um, Jesus embraced the child and said hospitality towards children really is a way of welcoming me into your life and it's welcoming God who sent me. So, what is hospitality? I think a great definition is when we offer a way and opportunity for a person to flourish. How do we allow children, both those we know and those we don't know, to flourish? Those within our family, those within our church, those within our community, and throughout the world. Well, you can come up with your own ideas. Um, on an individual level, I, I think to listen, to attend to. No, to really listen, to laugh with, to play with, to study with, and really, really, really listen. What a wonderful gift if you are able to, with patience and gentleness, make any child feel like right now they are the focal point, the most important, the, the, the happiest person to them, to you. Um, that um, they, they are where your attention is. On a congregational level, we, we've done pretty well. Uh, not to brag and not to uh, uh, compare ourselves to other churches, which is kind of the human demonic thinking. Um, but the Lansing saves. Uh, we are one of three congregations in Lansing that are participating in that. Um, what we do at Pine Ridge, which much of that goes to their youth ministry. Um, we provide a space for Family Growth Center to serve uh, children and their parents. Um, we often pass out food baskets and, and have our, uh, our own food ministry. Um, and, uh, but the aspiration uh, goes beyond that. Uh, it, what if this congregation, and we've seen... Um, many examples of this in the decades of our history, that we are able to pass on a vibrant, winsome faith that um, children, as they grow into adults, keep to, and they, and they thrive and they flourish as believers in Christ. Um, but hospitality could also include, I, th I think without much stretch of an imagination, that we work and pray and advocate and donate and serve so that Children alive today inherit a world that is clean and sustainable. So it's not just hugs, especially in this time of pandemic, but it's all the ways that we kneel down 
and serve children in our midst, in our community, in our world. Let's pray. O oh Lord, you are our foot-washing servant king. May we hear your call to humble service as an invitation, as a way for our lives to flourish, as an exciting adventure, and as a loving response to your grace. Amen. What fresh perspectives might you gain from thinking like Jesus? How is God prompting ongoing repentance, change of mind, heart, and behavior in your life with Christ? As last of all and least of all, let us together confess our faith in the one who is greatest of all, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we continue in prayer. Thank you. 
made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us to overcome our divisions, that we are encouraged to work together for your sake. Bless all the leaders of your church, especially Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and our Bishop Craig Satterley. Make them ready to proclaim the gospel of peace and strengthen them to preach your loving word. We pray for the members of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Greenville and their pastor, Betsy Campfus. May they strengthen their relationships with you and with one another. We pray for Jason Mills, who is studying at the Gettysburg Theological Seminary as he grows in faith and understanding of your will. And we pray for our mission partners at the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota and our Baker neighborhood partners here in Lansing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth. Awaken in us a new desire to care for this world and empower us to support efforts to heal our environment. Be with all who are suffering from the effects of climate change, including the wildfires in the American West and the floods in, a, in the South. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of cooperation, we pray for nations of the world embroiled in conflict. Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work towards peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially women and children, who cannot find safety in their homes or country. We pray for all who serve in our military as they help to keep the peace around the world. Especially we pray for Tyler Barnes, Chris Brown, Andrew Devine, Darian Doan, Carson Kozlowski, Joshua Kozlowski, Rusty Landry, Christopher Morgan, Ben Painter, Ryan Schiffner, Jake Sonnenberg, and Eric Wheeler. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness. Help them find compassionate care. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. We especially pray for Mary Ann Allen, Virginia Bauman, Mary Brenke, Tasha Brisbo, Lois Carnes, Marv Cole, Crystal Collins, Ruth Ferguson, Doug Griffin, Emma Hicks, Amy Hunter, Rhoda Hunter, Marilyn Bass Heiser, Nancy Jackson, Marilyn Kostruski, Michael Mahoney, Linda McClellan, John Nelson, Yvonne Nelson, Theron Palmer, John Ransom, Gloria Robbins, Carol Rausch, Audrey Skidmore, Cheryl Van Patten, Shelby Waters, Matthew White, and Jerry Wright. Help us love one another in truth and action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of courage, we thank you for the service of all frontline workers during these difficult times. Be with all first responders, fire and police officials, especially community police officer Sam Kandel, and healthcare professionals. Provide us with the perseverance to see through the final stages of the pandemic. Help us all to make decisions based on the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, 
We pray for the young people of this congregation as they begin the church education year. Renew in us your call to welcome the children in our midst. As they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for Emma Hicks as she recovers from having hip surgery on Monday. And we continue our prayers for Johnny Lindstrom, Ashley Fernandez, Ginny Garatina, Wendy Prattley, Jim Miller, Matt Anderson, Caleb Crawford, and those we now name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and pray for all who grieve today. Shine your grace on all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please greet one another with a word of God's peace and love. As you do so, we will receive our offering today for the support of the entire ministry of Bethlehem Evangelical Lutheran Church. And I want to thank you from, from the bottom of my heart for that support. And as we receive that offering and you share a word of God's peace, we ask you to enjoy Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, sung by Jeannie Smith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, through the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, we have been bought with a price. We do not belong to the world. We are yours. Accept these offerings. They are gifts to you from your own people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Gathered as one in the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And the Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. And now we sing, The Lord now sends us forth. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.